hello people around the world how are you hope you all are fine and wonderful i dr sanjay once again back with a very charming and very great personality she is none other than she is killer roberts she has a record of traveling 21 countries on a bicycle from usa to pakistan and she covered total 18000 km that she has a that record she is a active right animal activist to know uh, to know more about you uh, killer robbers who is killer robbers let's move to killer first welcome to killer welcome to our show how are you thank you dr sanjay i'm fine thank you yeah how are you i'm, I'm fine too could you please introduce yourself to our viewers Yeah sure. Um I'm not from the USA, I'm from the UK, United Kingdom. Oh. <laughs> it's all right. Uh so I'm from a very small country called Wales that's part of the United Kingdom. And um yeah, I'm as you said I'm trying to be an animal rights activist. I'm vegan. I'm a social worker and um I'm now a cycle tourer. I've been on the road traveling for five and a half years. As you say I left the UK in 2015 and I've cycled through 21 countries to reach Pakistan. Yes. <laughs> Amazing to know uh, you have a world record of traveling more than 21 countries. How was that experience? Oh, it's been fantastic. Uh, yeah, I mean now traveling by bike is my way of life and um you know i've uh, given up the rat race the 9 to 5 and uh, yeah it's the best move i ever made i couldn't be happier it's great amazing amazing to know that um, okay, could you please share your our life your life story your life struggles your life experience from your childhood till your first job as a teacher then you uh, suddenly select to be a uh, uh, travel and see uh, explore the whole world on a cycle ride uh, and, uh, and uh, what are your life experiences what are hurdles you face to reach today what you are can you please share to our viewers okay so yeah as i said i grew up in wales outside a very very small village on a very small island um but i was lucky enough to um live uh by beside a beach so me and my brother would play on the beach and have many adventures uh we had a a tough childhood we were pretty poor and uh quite an unstable uh, family life to begin with uh i i wasn't very academic either i didn't do very well at school uh i preferred the arts so when i left school i trained to be a textile designer I first studied general arts and then I tried to be a textile designer. Um but I guess uh due to huge uh a huge overdraft after studying to be a student, I ended up going back to my uh, summer job and worked in hotels and hospitality for 10 years. Uh, I was lucky enough to be working in Snowdonia, which is our national park where the highest mountain is in Wales. a uh, beautiful beautiful landscape so i did that for about 10 years and then i thought uh i needed to do something more focused um a steadier job than working in tourism can be quite um unstable anyway i started working for local government then and um worked for eight and a half years as a homeless prevention officer helping people who were threatened with homelessness homelessness is a very big issue in the UK uh, we have many social social issues um amongst them you know child poverty uh, drug addiction alcoholism um s- people losing their homes due to illness health issues so it's a growing problem in the UK and uh, Yeah, I did that for eight and a half years, seven and a half years. Um, but then, actually, the toll of the job became too much for me. It was a um, very, very stressful job, and my own health was starting to suffer. So I decided to make a move 
and uh, went back to university and trained to be a social worker, which is what I had wanted to do since being a child. I always dreamt of uh, working overseas as a volunteer or a social worker. So I retrained and then um, as soon as I finished my studies, I decided to start traveling. So initially, really, due to um, feeling a little bit fed up of my own country, fed up of this whole trap that poor people end up being in, trapped within the nine to five, trapped by a mortgage. And um, capitalism is something that I'm really not a fan of. So I wanted to forge a different life for myself and uh, a more simple life, stress-free. And that coupled with my passion for traveling uh, led me to decide to um, set off and uh, leave the UK. Amazing to know that uh, uh, your life story, uh, as you said that you were the animal rights activist, you serve the people who are homeless in the UK. Uh, yeah. And uh, from the uh, uh, animal rights uh, or human rights activist, now you mm -hmm. become animal rights uh, activist. How? Uh, uh, this, <laughs> no big deal. Okay, same. Okay, great to know that. Uh, as you said, you are good in textile, you are good in art subject. Then how you decide to go in uh, to be a teacher of English subject? Can you please share us? Yeah, sure. So um, I kind of hit the road with uh, with the savings that I had um, and was working, doing some voluntary work along the way. But eventually, of course, my savings uh, dwindled. <laughs> and I thought, well, I have to find a solution to be able to stay on the road. And luckily for me, I speak English as a first language. So, um, yeah, I've been fortunate that this is my mother tongue and that there's a huge demand around the planet for English teachers. So I kind of fell into teaching by accident, um, but I really enjoy it. And um, I love working with children. I, I also taught adults. Uh, I enjoyed that too. It was fun. But um, yeah, the kids are, uh, you know, when children are at that age and everything is new and they're discovering, I just really like working with uh, children. So I started teaching in Georgia and I taught there for um, about nine months and then got back on the road again. And then by the time I arrived by bike in China, I'd run out of money again. So then I, I secured a longer teaching contract. I taught there for a year and a half in Kunming in Yunnan province. And um, yeah, it's become a really great tool to enable me to travel. So yeah, that's what I do now. Amazing, amazing. Amazing you share, uh, uh, you become a teacher accidentally, but you have a benefit of uh, English as a, your first language and there is a huge demand on the planet of English uh, teachers. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing this. Uh, my next question to you is that what is your passion? One patient you already uh, show and practically do it uh, by bike riding, uh, by riding on bicycle from USA. What is another patient? What is your mission? What is your vision? And what is your big dream you want to pursue it? Over to you. Yeah, well, I guess I'm kind of living my big dream. I mean, I want to see more countries, <laughs> um, more of each country. Um, and also, you know, um, try to spread the word of veganism wherever I go and um, animal rights and also human rights. Like you say, I'm interested in human rights and sticking up for the uh, disadvantaged people of the planet um of course my <laughs> my dreams for the world are uh, a, a massive and uh, people tell me that i'm a bit of a dreamer and it's uh, you know i'm a romantic socialist these things are never going to happen but i would really you know prefer a world without money a world without borders 
a world where animals and people of all kinds were treated equally. This is a world that I would love to live in. And it's a world that I'm sure would be lovely for all people to live in, including the people who are ruling us and, uh, you know, um, people who have more than us. I'm sure it would be a nice place to live. But I can't really realistically see that happening in my lifetime. So I'm just going to continue living the life that I want to live and try to be outside of the capitalist society as much as I possibly can. Of course, in order to survive, you have to make money so you can eat. So I still have to do a little bit of that, but I want to make sure that, you know, the balance, life, work balance in my life is, um, is much better I'm not on this planet to work. I'm here to live and uh, I will only work, uh, you know, to feed myself and to cover my responsibilities. But uh, other than that, yeah, my mission is just to uh, enjoy this life. It's precious, isn't it? We don't know how long we're here and uh, I want to make the most of it and also, along the way, you know, try to help others as much as I possibly can. Uh, that brings me great joy as well. It's always nice to help others and see them smile, isn't it? Amazing to know that. Uh, you said you, you want to see the world without borders. You want to see the world where animals, humans can live freely as they want. Amazing. You, uh, I, I agreed with you. Uh, is, uh, thank you so much for being such a wonderful person and uh, you are al not only thinking for human but you are also thinking for animals too uh, mm -hmm. thank you for being a great soul my next question to you is uh, you what is your opinion about pakistan before you came to pakistan and what that opinion changed after you came to pakistan or to you okay so um uh, since traveling through um, other Islamic countries, I, I knew that uh, the propaganda that we hear in the West about all of these countries and about your religions wasn't true. Um, if I'm honest, I was still a little tiny bit, you know, um, concerned about coming to Pakistan, mainly because family and friends were expressing concern and were asking if I would be safe. And of course, there's always that element of doubt because you don't know what to expect from a country. You don't know how much you hear is true and how much is uh, made up. So there's always a little bit of uh, trepidation. But uh, on the whole, I pretty much knew it was going to be amazing. I'd seen photographs and, you know, as a cyclist, the Karakoram Highway is like Mecca to cyclists. So uh, we all flock here to cycle that road. And uh, I wasn't disappointed at all. The uh, It was an amazing journey. The scenery is stunning. Um, I haven't seen mountains like I've seen in Pakistan anywhere. And just the the diversity of landscape. When I was in uh, Skardu last week, I saw the amazing winter desert surrounded by snow snow capped mountains. And then later in the week, the desert covered in snow, uh, which is something I've never <clears throat> seen before. And also the beautiful marshland there and the Indus River. The colour of the river is just absolutely. Um, amazing. I've never seen such a tur turquoise before. It's beautiful. And um, I'm struck really by the diversity of culture in the country. Uh, so many different languages I was completely unaware of. And with those languages, they those people all have their own cultures, their own cuisine, uh, their own textiles. Uh, music, the music here has, has also been something that I've really enjoyed. Um, but most of all, and I know everybody says it, which is a testament to uh, the people of Pakistan, but hospitality here is um, a wonderful, wonderful thing. Every single day, uh, people 
are, you know, showing their kindness and generosity to me. And uh, it's something that I'm not used to. We're not used to in, in the West where people uh, don't behave like this so regularly anymore. But uh, people here are so open and so um, so willing to offer assistance, even if you don't need assistance. <laughs> people just come up to me and say, can I help you with anything? <laughs> and, um, yeah, it, it is amazing. And, you know, we, um, the people of Pakistan are beautiful people, beautiful souls inside and out. And uh, I hope to be able to stay here a lot longer if I can. Yeah, I love it. Thank you very much uh, for such lovely word to my country. Uh, as you said that uh, you love the uh, hospitality of the people of Pakistan. Uh, mm -hmm. You love their kindness. To, you love their generosity. You love their uh, landscape of the Pakistan. Then, thank you so much. Uh, my next question to you then, as you have uh, uh, traveled 21 countries, out of all 21 countries, which countries uh, you enjoyed more? And uh, uh, over to you. Yeah. Well, everybody asks me this, and I can't say any one particular country that I like more than any other. Every country is so unique and so different, and there are things in each country that I like um you know maybe more than other countries like might be the food in one country music in another country um but there are certain places that i feel are pretty special and i would say that they're you know the people of the mountainous areas of some countries um i've really enjoyed the, the uh mountain people here i don't know if it's the mountains or the landscape and or what it is but uh those uh, countries, like Pakistan, of course, and uh, I really enjoyed uh, the landscape of the Pamir Highway in Tajikistan as well, and the Pamir people, who I think are fairly similar to um, a lot of people in Pakistan. Uh, they still they have that same generosity and hospitality. Um, yeah, I love uh, I love every country for some different reason. Um, and I think it would be unfair for me to pick a favourite. <laughs> uh, great to you share that uh, you enjoyed all your life journey of all 21 countries. Every country has some uniqueness. Uh, some are rich in culture, some are rich in people, some are beautiful, uh, some have beautiful, beautiful people with great hospitality, uh, some have beautiful. Uh, natural uh, points so, so in, you enjoyed everywhere thank you so much for sharing sharing this my next question to you that uh, uh, as you uh, came again Pakistan so why you came again Pakistan what is actual cause behind it and uh, can you and the second if you, any cause can you explain what is cause will is with us or you Okay, so when I came to Pakistan last year, I only had a two-month visa. And, uh, I mean, many people might think that two months is quite a long time to spend in a country. But actually, I only spent the time um, traveling from Hunza, you know, down the Kar uh, along the Karakoram Highway uh, to just beyond Islamabad. So there is still so much to see here. And... Um, this was just like a taster of Pakistan for me and enough for me to um, really fall in love with the place and realise that I wanted to see much more. Um, so, yeah, so I left my bike here when I left last year. I had to go back because of COVID. And as soon as uh, travel restrictions were lifted, I came uh, to Pakistan as soon as I could. Uh, so, yeah, I just... Now, since um, coming back, I've been to Sawat and um, Interior Punjab. I've seen quite a bit. I've been to Sagoda, um, Jalpana, and I've been to Skardu, as I said. Uh, but now I want to go south. I'm really interested to go south and to see uh, Sindh province as well. I'd love to go to Balochistan and um, 
to Kashmir, but as a tourist, I don't think I'm allowed to do that at the moment. Um, but I know that there's already, you know, a lot to see in uh, southern Punjab and in Sindh province. So that's that's where I'm hoping to go next. Um, yeah, do some exploring. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Uh, we welcome you in Sindh. Uh, we welcome you in Tharparkar. When, uh, whenever uh, you decide, uh, please come to visit also Sindh and Tharparkar. You must enjoy. Uh, thank you yeah. so much. Uh, my next question to you is, you are an animal activist. As you said, mm -hmm. you came to Pakistan for your friend as his mm -hmm. dog is lost. Then That's he right. became an animal activist. activist. You came here to help him. Can you share uh, how you helping him and how he is working, uh, your friend working as an animal activist? Is mm -hmm. uh, You are working on any project. So please share experience with us. Over to you. Okay, thank you. Yes, so um, when I came back, I traveled for a month with my friend and his dog, Hachi. Hachi's a, a, a golden Labrador. And uh, sadly, he was uh, taken at a tent pegging event about four months ago. So we have been looking everywhere for Hachi. If uh, any of your viewers um, see him, he's quite recognizable. He has a... A fat deposit about the size of a cricket ball on his left backside. So he's quite easy to identify. So we've been looking for him all over social media. We've been looking in the uh, animal markets. We've been uh, trying to spread the word as far as we can. We've distributed leaflets. There is a reward uh, for Hatchie's return. So um, if anybody has any news of him, you know, uh, please, you know, could they contact maybe us through you? And uh, yeah, so since uh, since Hatchie's disappearance, my friend, he didn't want to just sit by and do nothing. So um, this this uh, situation has already um, shown him that you know that it's not just his dog that's that's been stolen. There are many people's pets that get stolen all the time. And uh, while people are stealing these pets, there are other animals living as strays on the streets. And sadly, people have been um, killing these animals. They they mistreat them on a daily basis. The animals are have all kinds of medical needs. So uh, he's been working with a shelter here, JFK in Lahore, and um, trying to raise the profile of these stray dogs and help people see that, you know, a stray dog is just as worthy as a, a pedigree dog. In fact, uh, some of these dogs have got stronger immune th systems. They're healthier animals because they don't have these inherited diseases that um, happen when dogs are bred for pedigree. So uh, they make excellent pets and contrary to what people a lot of people believe they're, you know, they're not dangerous, they're not dirty. And uh, if you adopt a dog from an animal rescue center, they will have been vaccinated, they will have been treated so their uh, diseases are cured. And um, in some circumstances also they're, they're neutered. And um, yeah, I would just say that, you know, um, uh, the UK is, um, well, I, I don't want to get political and <laughs> religious, but we're not such a religious country, yet we adopt dogs from all over the planet. Uh, other other countries stray dogs. We're, we're importing and looking after them, giving them homes. So I think it would be much better for the planet and everybody if we could all just look after our own and and. Be kind to animals. Uh, you know, dogs will love you unconditionally. They will be the best friend that you could ever dream of. They're wonderful creatures. And um, I think it's about time that we started treating them with the dignity and respect that they deserve. Okay, great. Uh, you said uh, that... Uh, your friend or you were uh, trying the street dog 
uh, to the uh, homeless uh, to give them to the uh, you uh, to the uh, someone who can adopt them you are trying shelter the uh, street dog you are trying uh, to care the street dog so thank you so much for doing such wonderful work and you are also giving the message that love the dog uh, dog are not uh, dog are peaceful animal uh, yeah. dog are friendly thank you so much my next question to you uh, uh, sorry uh, to ask this yeah. but uh, uh, as you came pakistan you spent time in pakistan can you please share uh, with us uh, what three thing three most thing you don't like about pakistan you want to modify them could you please i don't like um well okay so the stray dog situation you know the 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 violence and hostility towards animals it's not just dogs it's donkeys as well uh and cats you know countries like um countries like turkey are doing an amazing job with their stray animals they care for them um on a daily basis they have hotels for them in the parks they treat them really well uh so i would say this um uh, the the other thing that i don't like and it's something that i don't like around the planet is the situation with begging on the streets um and i know this situation is happening because of the inequality that we have on the planet um and i think it's a very sad thing and as a caring compassionate person i want to help these people but i know that there is also some organized crime that happens um in conjunction with these needy people and i've been told that government does provide assistance for people who need it in pakistan so i think that um yeah this situation is very distressing for me on a daily basis because i don't want to say no to people but equally i'm not a rich person i can't give people that i made all my money especially if that money is not going to feed that child or that poor person it's going to go to somebody who's you know using them so that is uh, something that i don't like um 3 3 <laughs> oh i don't like the price of coffee <laughs> I love coffee. I love very much. <laughs> so um I don't know amazing, amazing. I don't think anyone could do much about that. <laughs> no no. It, But on the whole, this, you know, this is just a normal country. conversation. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Uh yeah, uh, I think that's three. Thank you so much uh for sharing. uh you are uh, you sharing such things you want to change about uh, three things to modify in pakistan especially for street animals to look after them to shelter them uh, to mm-hmm. care them thank you so much uh, we have few comments ali raza panjwani sahab wonderful parshram button sahab excellent jeram button sahab great uh, there is a one uh, boy who was yeah. you have any experience about her oh, no she has no experience about her father <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay parvin patel celebrity guru uh, he has a really <laughs> cool celebrity killer you know him i don't think i'm a, i don't think i'm a celebrity but thank you pravin <laughs> dead corona virus attack animal how we can save wow. animal Okay there is yes. a question can yes. you answer it well from what i've heard in the uk i think that there were two cases i think one case where it's where a coronavirus spread to a dog and one to a cat but i believe that it's very 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 unusual and otherwise we would be seeing many more animals that are affected by it um so yeah i i don't it doesn't seem to be spreading to pets and in the uk people are letting people pat their pets and are not worried about the spread of the virus to animals 
So as far as I know, I mean, I'm I'm not an expert. This is just what I've heard on the news. Um, and we've been living with coronavirus for a year now, and I don't think that the animal issue for them is uh, is a problem. I don't think so. But maybe somebody in your audience can correct me. <laughs> Okay, thank, thank you so much uh, for share, uh, by uh, sharing your experience about UK. You, uh, as you said that there were two cases of corona in animals in UK. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, as we are enjoying to talking with you, you are so humble, uh, uh, you are so kind, and uh, very cooperative person. And we feel privileged, we feel honored having you on our show. Thank you so much. Claire, uh, Claire Roberts for being such a humble person. Uh, but my last request to you is give a beautiful message to my viewers, then we can end this show. Thank you so much. Over to you. Yeah. Well, I'm honored to have been invited, Dr. Sanjay. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And um, yeah, I would just like to say, as I said before, you know, uh, a very a big, huge thank you to the people of Pakistan for all the friendship and uh, all the generosity and all the kindness that you've shown me. Um, I, I didn't expect uh, a British person to be welcomed so much considering our terrible history. And it's really heartwarming to see how, um, how tolerant people are and how forgiving and kind they are. And it's, it, I feel it's genuine kindness and it really touches my heart and I'm, I'm very, very grateful. And uh, yeah, hope, hope to see some of your viewers on the road. And uh, thank you for having me. It's been great. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. You, uh, you love the Pakistan people, hospitality, their genuineness, their kindness. Thank you so much uh, for such a beautiful word to my country, to my people. Thank you so much. Yeah. Viewers, uh, this is uh, Kelly Roberts with us. She shared her life experience. She appealed us to the save uh, uh, that street dog, street animals, shelter them, protect them, care them. Uh, this is all about today episode. In next episode, in next live show, we came with another new guest and we'll learn uh, more new things. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you, Kalan Roberts, one second. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Allah, Allah, Allah.